So yes, okay, so you've been struggling in prayer and it's been dry. And and so you can be tempted to be like, oh, let's let's figure that out. Like, okay, why you've been struggling and, and what do you desire? And like all these different things. But I love saying it, but hey, listen, right now, as you share your heart and you've been struggling in prayer or, you know, this has been really moving you or I'm drawing you, like, what's Jesus like? Mm. Like, what's this, what's Jesus' heart like for you now as you share your struggle or your pain? Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. hey I'm Father Mark Mary. Hey, I'm Father Angelus. Hey, I'm Father Innocent, and I just <laughs> yes. looked at the sound thing because I didn't trust hey, Father Mark Mary. I'm it's sorry. okay. <laughs> I receive, I experienced the beauty of your investment in this. We are the Franciscan Friars of Renewal. And it's Poco, a Poco podcast. Yes, it is. <laughs> I think the, I had fuzz on my nose, by the way, from the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just There's a um, kind of the trend on a lot of bigger podcasts these days, I think, is you are basically like, you don't really have like a specific start of the episode. Like you're just sort of talking and then okay, it's on. God, it's on like, maybe you might even not be the the mics. And then, you know, but no, we don't do that. Oh. oh. Okay. Like technically we started recording before, but I don't think like what you want, what we were just talking about on here in the way that the tone that you were saying it. <laughs> you, not that you're it's criticizing big, my tone? <laughs> no, I'm just um, affirming your pastoral sense. <laughs> Wow, that was a nice way to say it. <laughs> Thank you. So here we are. And um, I guess I have a question for you guys. For like the royal you guys or like us guys? Uh, so I guess the, <laughs> just a, a reminder, uh, kfc.org forward slash Poco KFC. So to get sort of all of the podcast episodes and some of the stuff that's going to go with it, kfc.org forward slash sons will get you the um, Our Lady Guadalupe consecration done by Father Innocent and Father Angelus, or if you look for the Spanish version, Father Agostino. And they have, yeah, they have daily mailings. And then you guys did a bunch of videos. And it's a big thing. Yeah, we're excited about it. Again, it's an invitation to a 40-day consecration that will end on December uh, uh, 12th with Our Lady of Guadalupe or, or the next day to make our consecration. Um, but going for 2 million men consecrated. We're <laughs> yeah, we're, That's I mean, the goal, 2 million. You know, in 1531, she, we're going to talk about this, but 9 million people were baptized. Mm -hmm. And so we're going, we're just going for, <laughs> um, I mean, a, a, a fraction of that, but we're just going for our lady who's coming after us. She wants to reconsecrate our hearts to her son, Jesus. And so I just believe she wants to do that. 2 million. 2 million <laughs> baptized? <Man>. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll go for that too. 2 million, re, re 2 million consecrations. <laughs> The knights are going to be like, what did you guys just say publicly? <laughs> we said, you let's guys. just go with you who are listening right now. <laughs> let's just go with you consecrating your heart. Um, here's a question for you guys. Ask. This is about rules. Hmm. Rules in the friary. Ooh. And this is, we're going to introduce, we're going to welcome our listeners behind the scenes. This is a real time. This meeting. is a real conversation that I have. I have a feeling, our is, meaningless I have a feeling you're, you're coming after us with this I question. I am not coming after you with this question at all. I'm seeking, I'm recognizing that I have a particular movement that is imperfect. And you're a new local servant and, and you're may, just asking that well, may not be beautiful. That may not be beautiful. Particular movement that may not be beautiful. <laughs> that may not be beautiful, but I'm trying to get like, because I'll do, I used to do this a lot with Father PT. Like, yeah, yeah okay, so. Is this yeah. what? What are the Let's rules play. around this? What are in a friary? What are well, we'll use one example? Is what are the what are the rules about? We can say singing in the friary. Singing, so not hmm. in the chapel. Hmm. Just kind of going about your day, and you're just like got a song. Are we talking about like humming, or like singing, or like loud singing? I guess we could put in singing, humming, whistling the whole the whole gamut. That's interesting. That's interesting. So, do you think that you, there are you there want is my etiquette? Master, pastoral yeah, sense yeah, yeah, yeah. or, or oh, etiquette? Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to have a mix. I'm a, again, I, I, I form young men as a living for a living. <laughs> so, like, I, I probably have a pastoral sense. I think there's a couple things going on here. 
I think you do want people, you want people to be joyful, spontaneous in their home. Mm-hmm. Right? Some, so something, I don't know if he does, but I, <laughs> <laughs> I, ju- I generally think that it's your home. So I want you to be comfortable. Yes, I agree. Spontaneous, joyful. But at the same time, when you live with other people and especially in a religious house um, where like, yeah, we have a cloister, usually like yeah. rooms, like in, in, when our, where our cells are or um, in the chapel, obviously, or by the chapel. Like we're not, we don't live in a fraternity, right? Like in this, a cat or a, like a, a like a, a college fraternity, like mm-hmm. where it's just like rough housing and a bunch of dudes hanging out and, yeah. and not consider it. So you want to be joyful, spontaneous, but also <sighs> at the same time, you want to make sure that there are are norms and and you're you're just aware that you don't live by yourself and that you could interrupt people or, you know, or or generally like you want to fit into the body, right? That there's a body of like using that image. You don't want to be always the guy that's like on the outside doing his own thing and totally oblivious to everything that's going on. So I'm singing loud or I'm like in the kitchen and, and I kind of take over through my personality or, or my, you know, you just want to make sure that we, there's like a, there's like a, a an intentionality to live in communion with the people around you. And so you just don't want to live in your own world, mm-hmm. right? If, if I'm walking in the refectory and people are there eating, I don't want to like sing and, and, and like interrupt them. You know, I want to fit into what's happening. But if I'm like alone in the kitchen cooking dinner and some guys puts a song on or or, or like a CD on or or um, some guys can like sing, like I just want guys to feel free to do that. But you're just aware maybe. I'm done. I don't in, know I, contribution. I don't know if I have anything to add. My thought was, I was thinking like there's proper places like that should be protected. And so the reality of the cloister, reality of the chapel, things like that. And then there's proper uh, proper times probably. So the the i think we if it's our particular house there's a sense that there's silence and kind of uh what word am i looking for silence and recollection, recollection in, in different places but also if there's a time where like hey people usually like so we don't do it in our house anymore because our, our uh, superior doesn't like music in the house but you know some guys has music on during dinner or sorry during when he cooks or something like that mm-hmm. that could be like a proper time and it's a particular type of music right we don't yeah, typically it's, it's secular music so anyway um i don't know if i have anything to add i don't know where you're going with this but your superior has outlawed there was a, there's a, a lot of a lot of friaries have a cd player and there would be some consistency of people playing a song particularly if maybe feast days or sundays when they're cooking yeah your superior has we, we out, don't has outlawed gener- that that's the last couple of years it's been a little bit the Sultan of Silence. Yeah, the Sultan of Silence oh, has oh, nice stepped in. It's at the service of now. Prayer. The vocation office is a part. iron fist. He does. The vocation <laughs> office is a fun place. We we do like these. <laughs> the, <social> music. <laughs> what do you call that when you have like uh, there's like a place that doesn't have to follow the rules? It has like um, immunity. Immunity. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the vocation office. So it's, like a, it's a different country. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> What's the type of city where you can go to and it's like yeah, not uh, immunity. There's another one. Safe. Uh, uh, Whatever that one. Something called. city. A, yeah. Yeah. A, 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 uh, yeah, we're like immigrants are welcome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. What is that word? Um, I'll think of it. Clar- we need our claritas. We- <laughs> uh, sanctuary set apart. Hold it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sanctuary. It's a sanctuary it's city. Good. The vocation the office is, is a you sanctuary. You can come city. and enjoy praise and worship music and add a spirit of adoration. And the funny the thing Lord. is, I like them. People might know that we're different people talking. He was talking, and then now Father Innocence talking. Yeah. Like, I like music, but I try to help the guys detox because the world is crazy. And so I'm trying to help guys like transition and in okay nobody cares what's your point <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no okay i think like um i value and am moved by and appreciate guys being free and joyful and i think that's like a really big value so like if you will like the sound of guys singing whistling that kind or of th- even laughing i like laughing, guys like laughing. the spontaneous so laughing a certain and- like boisterousness to the thing I think is a good sign of vitality and health. And I think if we're going to lean one direction, we'd want to lean towards that direction. That surprises me. As Franciscans. I'm, I'm proud of you. Yeah. I thought you. you were bringing this whole thing no. up because you're annoyed. But but the interesting thing is I agree with you a thousand percent because yeah. I'm more like that. And I think what, what I've learned is we err on that side, especially with young guys. But I've it's interesting because I find that I feel the tension with older friars who struggle being in big friaries and who struggle yeah. with loud noises or struggle with like, you know, so it's like, oh, okay, how do we like help them? Um, so anyway, I'm just, I, I agree with you a thousand percent, but I've, I've also just, I've had to learn like how to care for people who, who struggle. I have a consistent experience when I'm in my office or even in a chapel where I, I often will hear your laugh. 
but I also will hear the saying? laughs of other people. And I, and it's, I'm moved in yeah. gratitude. Like, oh, you know, cause somebody obviously trying to care for Father Anderson, you're like, oh, his laugh just filled the friary. He must be doing okay, doing okay today. Yeah. <laughs> or Poshlin's in that space, right? Cause Poshlin's can be difficult at times, but when guys feel like the joy to laugh or to sing or to play, for, like there's a playfulness to it. I, I'm moved by that, even if I'm in the chapel and it's supposed to be quiet or, mm-hmm. or whatever, you know? So anyway. Yeah. And I think, um, what to say? Like, I, I appreciate, I think the principles, we, we, it's not going to be a black or white thing, right? I, I do think that there's like, uh, like there are these principles for common life of, okay, like we, we need, we want people to be free and to feel at home, to feel at peace and have space to be themselves and not be fear driven. Absolutely. Um, and not sort of to be quiet out of like a fear driven silence and like trying to like hide and, you know, like I don't want to ruffle anyone's feathers, whatever. I think that's unhealthy. Um, but uh, at the same time, we just need to be considerate of our surroundings and other people and how what we're doing does affect other people. Um, and so that's why there's this sort of gray space. Okay, so like now where where and what? Um, I do have, because again, like I don't, I haven't got a diagnosis or whatever. I do have a sensitivity towards sounds in certain spaces like somebody chewing ice in seminary class. Wow. Do you want to, wow. <laughs> he literally Bro. might as well just be I thought you were going to get through this for a segment without throwing you coming after ice me. at my head. Without after you coming after me, but anyway. No, I decided just to leave it at this part because I'm already the bad guy on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks for walking me through that. And but I'm totally with you. I don't want I don't like this the seat. I would when I lived here and the music was loud. Yeah. Sometimes I would take the authority and turn it down in the kitchen. All right, so we're, now we're ready for the main episode. So again, are, are we? <laughs> um, thanks everybody for tuning in, supporting us. And if you want to continue to support an award-winning podcast, one of the awards <laughs> being the of all of all time, the guys that have had the most mean, meaningless conversation of all time. Uh, <laughs> if you want fresh, to mystic aquinas we're gonna hang that up downstairs the guys are gonna love that clarity okay. <laughs> uh, um, and you want to be able to spread share the wealth you can support the podcast at spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco thanks everybody and again you can get the knights of columbus thing which we're going to kick get into next week and as we do we're going to go from the nonsense to a, a, the antonym of nonsense which is a word i don't know um <laughs> to um <laughs> on, spiritual, on spiritual direction. So the episode here is on spiritual direction. I'm the, excited about the, this. The heart of it, there's just not a lot of formation. There's there's an increasing, um, I think, stock is up. There's an increasing trend stock. towards people desiring spiritual direction, seeking spiritual direction towards apostolates, even requiring their members to have spiritual directors, strongly recommending it. There's not a ton of formation on what you do, how you do it. And... Um, and also, so we're going to talk about that. The main part, kind of part of it is like, okay, what do I bring to spiritual direction? That kind of stuff um, to, to make the best use of that, to make it be what it's meant to be. And we'll also kind of introduce it, I think, by talking about like who needs it. Sh- or should we start with what like what we do in it? And then maybe maybe the first part, like just talk about like generally what it is and and like who needs it. Great. And, and-, and I was hoping to do this episode with Father Pierre Toussaint. The three of you guys have gone through spiritual direction school. Uh, PT just couldn't be here today, Father PT. So I apologize, Father PT. But um, we love you, Father PT. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of thoughts on this, Father Mark Mary. This remind this episode reminded me of last year. I was humbled that you invited me in to talk to the seminarians about spiritual direction. And uh, so there's so much to say. So many books written on on the gift of spiritual direction. I think going to spiritual direction, giving spiritual direction. Um, I think my heart as a as a like one of my, maybe just to say like one of one of my most favorite like life giving things to do is spiritual direction, the gift of one on one, accompanying people in the spiritual contemplative life. I, I just my heart is moved. So I, I have a lot to say. But um, but before we kind of get in. Like I do have some thoughts on like what what the invitation is and who, um, like who could could benefit you know from spiritual direction or other types of like accompaniment. So, but but before we start, I just want to to bless people and their desire and their need for spiritual fatherhood and spiritual motherhood and the desire to be accompanied in your spiritual life. I think that's like just to say like we're all in for that. 
And if you desire this and desire to have like a community of people to live in a, in a relationship or friendship with people who are helping you go deeper in the spiritual life, that's, that's what it means to be Christian. And, and so we just want to bless, just totally bless that. Um, for your desire to be accompanied, that's like from God, and God just wants to use that to help you, to bless you, and to help you go deeper. Um, what I think we're going to do is is kind of zoom in a bit to really talk about when we say, um, or when we talk about spiritual direction and preparing for spiritual direction, or or discerning if this is what God is asking me to do. I think we probably just want to zoom into like, okay, but but like, what's some good questions and. Um, some some just thoughts on how if, if like we're like if God is calling us if we're prepared for this and so it might be challenging and I just want to say that that I have like this is an opinion right because spiritual direction could be like could be very broad you're like, saying it it is or is not an no opinion? It, it is it's just my opinion like right. or school maybe yeah or school of thought or things Coach, like that yeah. but but again if like spiritual direction to you is just like hey I want to talk to someone about life and like a spiritual life coach and I just want to get together and like and talk, talk about a variety of different things. Again, that that desire to be accompanied should be blessed. But I just, my opinion, <laughs> um, and the way that I was kind of formed, and it, just to maybe throw throw this out there, is I just like to, when we talk about spiritual direction, I, I, I t- like to talk about contemplative spiritual direction. And some people think like, well, that's kind of silly. Like, isn't it all spiritual direction or the spiritual life contemplative? But what, what, I, what I just like to focus in on is that when someone makes a daily commitment to grow in their interior life, the contemplative life, their prayer life, I'm using all those words interchangeably, when interchangeably, but when someone makes a daily commitment um, to God or responding to God's like call in their life, that I'm I'm going to make time every single day to to grow in prayer and to um, to engage the sacramental life in a new way daily to engage um, the scriptures, to engage silence, um, to make time to to live in a deeper communion with God in prayer every single day. Um, we w- what I what I like to, to to say is that then then I think you're ready for contemplative spiritual direction where you can sit with a spiritual father and a spiritual mother, and you can talk about and process and even pray together in what God is saying to you in the present moment. What, what God, or let, let's just make it more clear, like what the Father is saying to you, what Jesus is saying to you in the present moment daily. And so we're, we're talking about what God is saying to you in prayer, in your personal prayer every single day. When I sit down and make that, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, holy hour, like whatever that is, that I'm living in communion with God. And I believe that he, he is communing with me and speaking to me. And, and that I would love to, for someone to accompany me in that, to hear the voice of Jesus daily and what he is saying to me and where he's calling me deeper and how he's asking me to grow. So that's what I mean by contemplative spiritual direction, that there is a commitment to contemplative prayer, to silence and receptivity, and I'm, I'm opening my heart up to what is God is doing in my daily experience of prayer. And then, then you just get, then the guidance is, is, is for the spiritual director to come and help you identify the movements of grace and what his voice sounds like in a daily experience. Um, I'm gonna leave it there because I also think there there could be other needs. For instance, like pastoral counseling. I was gonna go there. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I'll I'll pitch it to yeah. you because a lot of a lot of young people in my own experience as well, personally, before like when I had my con- or like my 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 going deeper, like I just wanted to talk to someone and I was talking to them about like like growing, growing in relationships and friendships and I talking to them about my wounds and, and like it, 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 what it looked like was like pastoral counseling. I was just processing my daily experience of my woundedness and my growth and my, like I needed a spiritual life coach, but we rarely ever talked about like what God is saying to you in prayer. And so I needed that for a season of my life. Um, so I want to bless that, but, but for me, and it, it could be kind of intense, but for me, that's different than, than contemplative spiritual direction. You have like the spiritual life coach, pastoral counseling that's just really helping you kind of get your life together and processing that um, or as opposed to as uh, someone who's really helping you hear the voice of God in your daily prayer. Just to mention a few things, I, I think Father Mark Mary, you so rightly said that the stock is up for spiritual direction, like the desire for spiritual direction. I don't know if the stock is up for spiritual directors. And so I right. think they think that's a felt poverty in the church. 
Um, because and I and I love when a priest in particular will say, "I don't know if I have the gifting for that, or I don't know, I don't do that." Because at least there's an honesty sit, that say, that we could sit here and chat, but I don't know if I'm trained or have the maybe the the uh, spiritual gifts or the practical gifts to be able to walk with somebody in that. So I'm really I'm moved by that. But the the idea that there's a need, there's a great need. And um, I think the church is recognizing that there's a there's also a great need for directors and the great need to know what it is and how to do that. Yeah, you have a I have a, a couple more things. Go for it. Okay. No, 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 no. Um, I think to Father Innocent's point, I, I thought he he could probably talk the entire time about it, and so I was hoping he would be at least <laughs> give me some space to to talk about it because no, I, 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 you did, I bounced you did. past it. But I, I think that was my main question: is that is I when you're listening to this episode, or maybe you've already already started to ask some of the questions, and I think this the question is start like where you're at and what your need is. You know, what's the need? What's the cry of your heart? What, what do you need right now in the spiritual life? Or what do you need right now in the emotional life? What do you need, need right now in the midst of your journey with the Lord? And so there's a, a whole lot of needs, right? But the the need for, um, maybe you need healing, you know, and, and, and you're like, okay, I need someone to walk with me or I would like someone to walk with me to be able to, to, to be able to process my story, process the woundedness of my life, process the, the experiences and difficulties I had in my life. Um, which is super powerful and super beautiful. That's where we're like, maybe and there's a, that would be proper counseling, right? There's, there's Catholic counselors out there that could help me do that. Um, so it's rare where a counselor, it's, it's beautiful when you hear that counselor brings in the spiritual life. And that, I think that's the integrity. Yes. Go team. The entire, uh, the integration that you're looking for as a Catholic uh, young man or woman is that I can, I know that I'm, I'm bringing all to me this relationship. But sometimes it's most of the time those things are very separate, right? Um, I'm going to grow in healing, so I have a good counselor. We 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 oftentimes need good friends that we can share our hearts with and share our lives with. That's a that's a big thing. Sometimes the spiritual coach or the life coach thing is I have very practical needs throughout my life, like how to organize my day and how to organize my time and how to do different things. So like a, a life coach could be helpful there. And so the need of your heart um, and is it spiritual or emotional, right? And and not that it's. It's, as trained spirit directors, it's it, we we look at the whole person, but there's a there's an emphasis on helping a man or woman stay with the Lord, connect with the Lord, and and make sense of what's what's happening interiorly in in, in their prayer life, right? <laughs> and so, I think I don't think there's a clear that I don't know if the goal of this conversation is like, hey, oh, I need spirit direction or I don't need spirit direction. I'm ready for spirit direction, but just to clarify that there could be a movement of your heart where you really want to desire healing and making sense of your story. Okay. That's not necessarily spirit direction. There could be a movement of your heart that just needs friendship to or, pro or to process, to process your life or, or that you have intense emotions in your life. So have to, having someone to help you do that, that's not necessarily spiritual direction. Um, but when, when we talk about spiritual direction in, in a very particular way, I shouldn't say it's not spiritual direction. Oftentimes it actually is. And that's, that's where my spiritual direction can get a little bit, confusing because I'm sitting here talking to the priests about my emotional life, but we don't talk about my prayer much. We don't, we don't necessarily always make the spiritual connections or we don't always have this space to do. And so that's why it's different sometimes. But I, I guess, again, my initial proposal here is what do I need right now? And then to try to name that and then try to um, clarify what's, wh what help do I need in, in being able to to bring this need to someone. Um, and if we can keep it separate, then we can we can answer, okay, this is where I need to go and maybe need a counselor, maybe need a friend, maybe need a, a good spirit structure, whatever it might be. So I just wonder if that's a helpful place to start. Yeah, thank you. Is And I think maybe we'll, we'll kind of, I think what this first round will look like is kind of opening comments. <clears throat> so it might be a little bit scattered and then we'll kind of go back and each of us kind of will kind of go into like maybe the our priorities for it. Sure. Yeah. Because I think uh, we talked... I'm going to uh, rearrange the order a little bit is as, as father Angelus mentioned, there's the, the increase in desire for spiritual direction. And there's in many ways, there's like an, a decrease of priests and priests available. And there's just a very limited, so there's like a supply and demand issue, you know, and for a lot of people that can be frustrating for most folks, for most folks, this is not for everybody. For most folks, I do think if you're praying and you have some sort of shared discipleship, some sort of like group, and you have uh, some sort of I, I, some like a confessor, which is pretty easy to to make happen, um, and probably and some sort of like some sort of mentoring system. If you have and you like, yeah, you're doing all of that. Like you know, you're probably gonna have almost what, all what that you need, need. Yeah. right? And so like mentors can be just your parents, 
if you're they can be people who are in your same state of life who are a little bit ahead of you just some people who know a little bit more who can sort of like kind of like a youth minister maybe yeah, yeah it can be a youth minister yeah it can be whatever it is minister. you know again i do think i think that's kind of like if you will that's the that's the ordinary good soil that's a good work is that yeah, you're, that's you're praying yeah. you know living a spiritual life it's communal and then you have the confessor and then you have sort of like the mentor type of thing and and i think Again, it's it's the mentor one might not might be a little bit harder or some people might feel that, but it could just say you're a teacher. It could be just an older teacher there. You bounce some stuff off of, et cetera. Um, and it's just it's just the reality that there's just not a lot of spiritual directors out there. I don't know any I don't know any friars who have just who have space for new directees. You know, one of the most common things that we get is, hey, can I have a spiritual director? And it's like, I don't no and, who's available you yeah. know and sometimes it's just a math problem like guys just don't have right space it's, right yeah. and and it's like we have to realize as well it's not like a i'm not interested in thing it's just i've kind of hopefully i haven't done this in a dramatic way but i've kind of seen it is like if some if if someone says hey can you be my spiritual director and then i'm never available that is like deeply wounded. That's my like go-to line is just like, I'd love to be your spirit director, but it's not fair to you. It's like not, exactly. like, there's it, a justice thing here. It's like what you're going to find if I say yes is that it's going to be very difficult. And then that's just not fair to you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I feel, and obviously that's, you don't, yeah. you deserve better right. than that. You know? Yeah, you will get hurt. It's not <laughs> you, it's me. Um, but uh, so, so I think, yeah, that's, but again, there's a lot of people who either because they're missionaries or whatever, and discern might be a good thing to have. And then the other thing is um, before going full send into like what spiritual direction is, like what it's not, I do think there's, uh, I'm probably a little bit more boundary with it than everybody. But Ooh, tell me more. Um, you know, like I guess what I'm trying to say, like a spiritual director is not, um, it's not, we're not your father replacement. And so there's there's limits in what you can expect from the father. There is a spiritual fatherhood, um, but for particularly for me, I feel pretty strongly that we kind of have to keep it to what we almost professional. You know what I mean? Because it's such a vulnerable and intimate thing. Like there has to be some sort of boundaries. And so you know, like the spiritual director, life's happening, something's going wrong. There are like you lose a parent. Okay, we're going to be extra available. There's some other things that are happening that's like your spiritual director can't be the person who you always call and always lean on and expect to sort of father you in that way. Mm -hmm. Because again, um, I think it's not healthy. I think it's not what the Lord wants, not properly ordered. I think there's, but also I can't do that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And so that's what you're, if you're, if you're really, you can put too much on the spiritual director and then we're not going to be able to deliver. And then you might get hurt as it's well. It's more wounding, yeah. Yeah, does that kind of make sense? I actually agree a thousand percent and, and, and even uh, more so is that the whole point of spiritual direction is to actually keep you with the Lord. Yeah. Right, or like, so it's like, not only am I gonna not be a sur surrogate father for you, because yeah, spiritual fatherhood is actually the experience, but when, when things are happening in your life, like our whole point is to keep you with the, you have a father in heaven. Yeah. You have, like Jesus wants to step in and so it's almost like, no, you gotta go be with the Lord and I'm gonna help you do that. Right, so I, I think that's a thousand percent correct, but that might be hard for people because they're like, but father, like I need someone to talk to. No, well, my my whole point is to help you grow in confidence that you have a father in heaven and Jesus want it, is gonna take care of you. Yeah. And for me to just hold you in that relationship and people, I think it's beautiful, but people kind of balk at it because they want you to kind of, to be the one that has all the answers. Mm -hmm. And that's not the point is, is contemplative spiritual direction. Yeah. I just like from the other end, I, all of that is true, but I do my, my fatherhood feels that. Sure. Because like, there's this real like experience in my own life to really want to bless guys, to be there for guys, to, to be able to create a space for guys that when they, you know, especially when those, they don't have any, you know, and as I say that, it's funny, they don't have anybody else. I know they do, but um, again, a thousand percent, but just a, a vulnerable moment. I feel that because we, I, I think in so many ways, my own spiritual fatherhood wants to be there for people you know, wants to bless people, but I, I will run up against my own poverty, limitations, yeah. my own lim limitations. And then that, that kind of, again, is disruptive to me and to them, mm -hmm. you know? And so just to be I, I, yeah. and honesty, I feel that because it's not like we, we don't see the need or we don't want to bless or don't want to be there in particular moments and, right. and spaces. But, yeah. It's not, know. I guess it's not from a place of indifference. It's, it's a, it, I would say like when it's healthily lived, it's a place of confidence of the father. You yeah, know, absolutely. And, that, and I like that. that you, that's yeah. why I like, it's not me you're looking for yeah. kind of thing, but you know, 
which is great. Yeah, you you ha- we're gonna learn how to stand upright on our own and how to lean on the Lord. You know, um, so anyway, I think that those are that's probably some helpful stuff. So so yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say from my own experience too. My my life is a little funny sometimes because I do do formal spiritual direction with people, but then I also do a lot of inner healing with people, and just the just a, I think Father Innocent's point earlier, like it's helpful to keep all that separate because like, oh, what are we doing here? You know, and sometimes it overlaps and, but, but it's just a, it's an interesting, like continual, like desire or a need for me yeah. to be like, what, what, are, okay, this is what you mean, but what are we doing? You know, yeah. and is it formal spiritual direction or is it not? And just to make sure like, even as a spiritual director to have a clarity there about like what's right. happening. I just, my own personal experience, it's, it's, it's helpful for me and helpful for them as well. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I, I'll, I I believe in good boundaries, and I think their clarity is really safe and protective and charity. And like, I, I'll have some people who are like, once we be kind of sort of friends and buddies and stuff like that, and there's like a mutual sharing. Like now, I, I like so, we're too close to actually go into a spiritual direction relationship. So I've had people who are like, hey, could you do that? I'm like, I feel like actually we've already kind of passed that, passed that, and so <laughs> passed, we passed the exit. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. It's, <laughs> it's like, like we're actually like we're like friends or family, or whatever. But now. Yeah, we just can't like. Anyway. Yeah, it doesn't mean you guys can't share vulnerably or sure, be open. Sure, but, like, totally. Just not. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. So then, what is it? What do we? What do we? What are some? I'm excited what are you looking about for? this. Go ahead. No, no. I think I th- you you started that a little bit, right? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, I think so he did. Feel free if you want to continue. To- yeah, the only thing that, that I really want to emphasize that I I'm consistently moved by and it's kind of provocative. You ready? Well, Great. I think it's kind of provocative, but um, so I'm taking this from. I mean, this is obviously in the tradition to Father Mark Mary. You said this was your first thing, so I'm sorry if I'm stealing your thunder. But like the the number one thing I ask people is like, hey, what like are you actually praying? What like are you actually putting the time in daily and and in in school? It's at least 20 minutes of contemplative prayer. Like I'm engaging, I am engaging the Word of God in the sacramental life, and I am spending 20 minutes of silence, like like opening my heart up to the living God and receiving. So that you're actually praying, right? That, that that's probably, but the provocative thing is this, and this, I feel deeply about this. Um, and because I have, I find it in my own experience, in my own weakness, but also for many years, I just like live like this. Um, but spiritual direction can so much, uh, or so quickly become just about us. And so mm-hmm. what I mean is that like, okay, I do my examination and I come to spiritual direction with my journal and my list of what I want to talk about. And the questions are spiritual questions and okay. Like what I'm confused by and, and like, here's, here's what I think is happening and like, okay, that's all good data. But I love, um, I love when the like the church fathers, but also like kind of that my, the contemplative spiritual direction school I come a part of like, uh, I, I just love the reality that when someone comes into spiritual direction, and we sit down and we pray and we open the space of contemplative direction with the, with with the person. We actually, it's all actually all about Jesus. Like, what's what's Jesus like here? So yes, okay. So you've been struggling in prayer and it's been dry, and and so you can be tempted to be like, oh, let's let's figure that out. Like, okay, why you've been struggling and and what do you desire and like all these different things. But I love saying it. But hey, wait, listen, right now, as you share your heart and you've been struggling in prayer or you know, this has been really moving you or I'm drawing you. Like, what's Jesus like? Mm. Like, what's this, what's Jesus' heart like for you now as you share your struggle or your pain? What do you think Jesus is like when you were praying with blind Bartimaeus and you 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 identified with, with Bartimaeus' struggle and it really moved you? But what's Jesus like there? Like, what's his desire? What is he concerned about? What's his personality like, or what's his emotions, face, eyes like? What he, what's he like? And you're like, oh man, I've been, I've just been focusing on like what I got out of the prayer. And contemplative direction is like, well, no, the whole point is for us to become sensitive to what God is like. And then you're like, whoa, like, and so sometimes I actually pray in the moment with guys. Well, let's just ask him, like, Jesus, what do you show us? What your heart's like? wow, like I just experienced Jesus like being really moved by Barnabas and like he just really loves him or like um, Jesus is sad too. Wow, like what's that like that Jesus wants to like take on your pain and then you're in that place. It's it's just so difficult because it's often like I do this 
spiritual um, examination and I'm still stuck in myself and I report to my spiritual direction everything that's going on in me. Guys, we just can't stay there because we have, like the invitation is to recognize that there's a real person who's living in a relationship that wants to give himself and he actually has something to say in the present moment about our prayer. And so that's just what I think. It's just like, it's not just actually about you. There's a real person in Jesus and the Father, our Lady, the Holy Spirit, who actually wants to, to communicate to you. And so that's what that's why even in prayer, like we, I, I often ask people not to get up from their time of prayer without asking that question. Jesus, what are you like? Mary, what are you like as I sit here and I've meditated on this scripture passage? And, and just to start to note those things, um, I just feel deeply about that because I've, I, I've been in many spiritual directions in my own life where I just like, I just throw up all the, everything I'm experiencing and it's not about Jesus at all. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I don't think that, I'm, I'm sorry if that's like obvious. That's but. great. Yeah, and so there's like the balance. Like you're the, it's not just it's not like you're, you use the word surrogate father. It, we're also it's not also, also not like your accountability coach. Yeah, or like there's something in between. Yeah, yeah. I I think this is why it's important. I think a, hopefully a good spiritual director can help you prepare for spiritual direction. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, the this is kind of a distinction where you're like, okay, is it just kind of just going through the days of my journal and telling you what happened? You know, so it's a little. It's probably a little more than that because you want to prepare with these senses of where the Lord is, what's he saying, what's he been saying the last month. And so I think preparation for spiritual direction is maybe a, a, we can talk about the end or another conversation, but that that's interesting. Um, I think it just, cause that's beautiful. And father, you clearly move in that and, and live in that and, and bless people a lot. And we've been to school at the same school, which is great. Um, I, the only thing I would add is another uh kind of like response or uh, response to like that question what is spiritual direction to and maybe being vocation director they traditionally in the church spiritual direction was around getting help discerning something you know so the discernment being at the the heart of like okay lord i i'm at a place in my life where maybe i'm discerning my vocation or discerning a life move or discerning something and i can go to father and say hey father like i have a space in my life right now where i really want to discern my vocation and i could use help doing that i think that's the ignatian traditional Ignatian uh, desire for spiritual direction. And so, um, and why this is important because uh, that this discerning movements of the Lord needing help saying, okay, this is what's happening in my prayer. This is what's happening in my life. And I really need to, to bring clarity and a sense of what God is doing. Right. And so just to, um, that's why when you call our vocation officer, or write us an email, there's all the first two questions. Are you praying every day? And do you have a spiritual director? Because discernment's actually not possible and coming on a come and see is not helpful if you're not doing those two things, right? And so it's, sometimes it's just really easy. Like, hey, take three months and um, start to pray every day and, and, and get someone who can walk with you. And, and then we can we can really actually start to discern. And so I just think that's helpful um, to, to add into the conversation is you, know, you in a season of your life where you're discerning something. And then there's a sense that like it, uh, spiritual direction is more intentional. It's it's more like, it's like a, a target you have. Like I want to spend the next year discerning whether I'm called to marriage or whether I'm called to religious life or, or the priesthood. Um, and if, if it's done in this contemplative way, it's done in relationship with the Lord and it's done where I, my prayer actually adds this experience of giving my heart and giving my questions to the Lord when it comes to what he made me for and what, he, what he's called me for. Um, and that can to receive help from that to someone who can help me and kind of see those movements rather than discern a career or discern like, Hey, here are your natural gifts. Why don't you go try it out? But if this spiritual director can really help you to start to see the movements of the Lord, that, that helps discernment. And then that gives, um, a kind of a peace and confidence and a clarity like, Oh, wow, this could actually, we, we've done this for six months. And like, here, look at the, the moments of grace or look at the moments of prayer where you felt particular consolation or desolation or places where you, you start to understand more and more what the Lord mm -hmm. is doing. Um, so just to, uh, I don't, uh, the father innocence proposal is clear to me, but just an, another space where in discernment, which it could be helpful. I think that's. Yeah. And I'm kind of listening to this as well, part, you know, through the lens of one of my directees or one of your guys' directees and somebody like that. And I think, I think actually the opening conversation was kind of an accident. Actually, it was helpful. Like the sort of music, the music thing is like, because yeah. I think um, what we're not asking, like, you don't like it's not a, it's not a, like direction. It's not a performance. Exactly. You know, you don't have to come and sort of do it all right, and you don't have to like. 
and so and so you don't have to be you don't have to, we don't want you to come into this like in, like am i doing it right with like some sort of like fear or anxiety right i don't think that's what anybody else would want for someone to come experiencing that or to be taken away from this episode of like um or some sort of like embarrassment so would you like want to get ahead of any embarrassment like oh i've been doing it wrong it's like well no yeah i did it Bro, I mean, I'm. I did it right. It, for a it, long like, time. it wasn't like until I started being a director that I was like, oh, this is actually, oh, shoot, this is what it's supposed to look like. But, you know, I think a good sports director is patient and, um, absolutely. And, um, receives us, informs us. But, um, yeah. And, and, and certainly, like, there is space again if, like, some tragedy happens and, uh, in lifetime you haven't had a chance to process it with the Lord. Like, that's okay. Like, you, you don't have to have a, a night tight like sort yeah, of, sure. you know package with a bow and all that sort of stuff like okay you can come where you're at yeah totally. you know um where we i think there's a couple of presuppositions of spiritual direction are like you guys have said are that you're praying we also presuppose that god is speaking and that we're <laughs> capable of hearing him you know mm -hmm. and and i love the idea of because i think it can happen in a lifetime but often i think probably what would be ordinary is okay you're sharing what's happening and then you're able to answer the question, okay, like, like, okay, so what, like, when he told Jesus about it, what happened, or what did he say, or what do you, what did he, what did you feel, um, right? Because I think often, especially maybe for men, is like direction is like, okay, how was it? It's like, okay, like I went and saw, I went, and, uh, you know, watch, I saw a movie every day this week, like as an equivalent, like I made holy hour. It's like, okay, great. Now, like, what? Tell me what the movie is about what happened tell me how you felt about it you know like we want to get sort of into the details of it so like what did like what did jesus say what did he do um and i think a, a lot of our guys have been going on 30 days and they've been directed and one of the directors like i think she kind of famously begins the conversation okay like tell me what jesus is saying or tell me what jesus is doing and i think we in direction we really kind of want to get to that point okay so Absolutely. like what's jesus saying what's jesus doing um and then the other the other thing that I think is great, this is from Deacon Keating. Deacon Keating wrote a book called Remain in Me, which is for priests, but also there's a section on spiritual direction, which I copied and printed out and give to all of my directees if they're priests or not. Nice. And one of the things, he he kind of has this line, he like boils it down to this. His spiritual direction is essentially, and this is like a rough quote, but I think it's pretty close. So I apologize if there's any misrepresentation, but I don't think I am. A spiritual direction is essentially... Um, looking at what you don't want to look at and talking about what you don't want to talk about. <laughs> and, and that's like big, first with the Lord. And then we bring that and understanding that like trust is, is developed and sort of won and earned and grows mm -hmm. over time. So if you're going to a director and it's, you know, your second time seeing him, like, okay, you don't have to, you don't have to maybe look at all, all of the stuff, you know, but I think like it's, it's intended to go deep. And, and I really like that. It's like, okay, we don't just want to, we don't want to be surface. Like we want to, with the Lord, kind of go there. Um, so I, I think those I like are the two things. Like what is Jesus saying? And then, okay, like are we moving towards looking at what we don't want to look at and talking about what we don't want to talk about? Like, so. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, I also think that's just super helpful. Father Mark Mary, you mentioned that it's just like proper perspective and expectation. And this is, again, a hint at that again, is that what drives spiritual direction is not finding answers. Like oftentimes people come in like, well, here's what I want. I have resolution. a question and I want a resolution or I like, I have a wound. I want to be healed. Like, yes. I mean, Jesus wants to answer questions and bring light and truth, mm -hmm. but what in spiritual direction, it, you're going to be with someone an hour a month probably. Yeah. Um, and we're not like, I'm, I'm not, what's driving me is not like, okay, f I want to figure this out for like, help me father. I want to figure this out or make the pain go away, make the confusion. Or sometimes it's make the dryness go away. Make like, make the struggle in prayer go away. Guys, that's not. That's not what Jesus promises us in spiritual direction. What, what spiritual direction is all about is, no, I want to help you stay in communion. Mm -hmm. Or I want to help foster or protect the communion that is so real that you have with Jesus. I want to protect that, yeah, you're, you might be struggling in prayer, but I want to help you have faith and trust that your prayer is real. And I want to help you stay there. So when you leave this hour of spiritual direction and you go back to prayer, that, okay, I, I, I trust that God is real and Jesus is alive and he wants to speak to me. And, and my spiritual direction is helped him is helping me stay and hold fast and cling to Jesus. Right. So I, I love that as well. It takes any burden that we're like trying, like the spiritual direction director is going to have like some smoking gun or like, you know, some, some, some answer that's going to change my life. No, Jesus is going to, 
And so I just want to help you stay in communion to suffer the struggle and so that you can keep getting up every single day and growing confidence in your relationship. And then you can come back and we're just trying to help you stay there. Yes, we'll answer questions and we'll process things, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's not just about that. It's not a vending machine for me to like figure my life out. It's actually an invitation to stay in communion with Jesus because he will take care of you and he will protect you. He will give you light. So I often like to say that as well, that like, hey, bro, Yep, this was a hard spiritual direction, and I just want to help you stay with the Lord because mm-hmm. He's the one who's going to love yeah. you and take care of you. I think that right there in itself should encourage spirit directors, or should encourage priests that maybe like are a little intimidated, or because I think I'm going to say this: being this kind of spirit director is actually not that complicated, right? Because you're not that you don't have to figure it all out. You're not the counselor. You don't have to have a deep understanding of psychological realities, and you don't have to. But it's if you can just help people experience the movement of God in prayer and to stay with them. Um, I think, again, if this is what really people really need, I think hopefully that could give priests a little like, okay, I could do that. Now, I think it could be intimidating, which is real, but it's actually not as complicated as we think. And I uh, just to add to that, like our we both have uh, spiritual directors from the place that we went to school and it's called the Institute of Priestly Formation. But like, it's it's quite powerful to actually, well, what did I put here? My spiritual director, hey, could we just stop for a second and just be with Jesus? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I he like stops. Like, we, okay, that's, that was great. Can we just stop for a second and just be with mm. him? And it just creates a beautiful, beautiful space to remind us that like we're not, the the orientation is not to figure it out. The orientation is not to find answers. The orientation is not to keep processing. Sometimes they, they <laughs> in counseling, you will just say, hey, let's just take a pause. Let's just kind of see. Let's like read like it's sometimes it's like let's recheck in with Jesus and see how he is and see what he wants for us right now. You're like, okay. Meaning you've been a little bit disconnected by why you're talking for the last 10 minutes. Let's just reconnect with Jesus, kind of see where he's at, which is just really powerful for me. So I think that just to add to that, Father, like there's a real the, the gift is to stop and really pray in real time and experience what what we hope to experience, which is his presence. I, I don't think I, I I don't think Dean Keating listens to this. Um, but I heard, and and he's done this. He's done this in in different contexts with the friars. Is he's like, hey, can we just? And he'll like to to end. He'll be like, yeah, let's just place ourselves before the Holy Trinity and just ask the um, just ask God to kind of like protect these graces and kind of seal this into us. And then he'll just like stop. You're like, and you and it's like a holy moment where you're like, oh, we're just gonna ask the Holy Trinity to kind of just come and. Um, and then he's like, great, see you later. Mm-hmm. like we're scheduled for next month. All right. You know, it's yeah. it, something just really, really powerful. I'm sorry. I didn't want to jump back in. I just, that's great. No, you guys are the, you guys have the certificate. <laughs> I've learned from your schools. You're a great uh, director. Though. You're a great um, director. I'm still, I guess I'm, I have an image or analogy. You guys can nuance it. Cause I'm still just sensitive to the, what it is, what it isn't. And the way in which somebody could be thinking like, okay, like just, I think what we could say is that like, I think the we can call it the protein or the main course. We'll call it the main course of spiritual direction is okay, well, like my prayer. What's Jesus saying yeah. and doing? Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean there's not some sides, right? So Absolutely. if like, you know, you're growing in chastity and so there's some like accountability stuff, we can do that. If there's some Absolutely. family stuff, we can do that. But like, yeah, what we're, the, the main course we want it to be is okay, like what's, what's going on in your prayer? Like what's Jesus saying? What's he doing? What's his heart for you, et cetera, right? And, yeah, and I think they teach us in school that like it's okay that the spiritual director's it's just like to be clear about that and we're moving towards that. So sometimes I'm in spiritual direction with someone and we have an hour and you're like, hey bro, let's just like t- stop and yeah. let's just say, hey, listen, let's talk, let's process that. Or someone might say, hey, I actually have a question about like the mechanics of prayer. Like I've been struggling to, I've yeah. been getting distracted. Like, hey, let's talk about that. And so you might talk about different saints that could help or quotes or or like practical tools. I love that. But then what we want to, well, just we're moving you know, or sometimes, oh man, I just had this really fit, like intense fraternal struggle. And I'm just like, I was just like angry and hurt. Hey bro, let's talk about that. And then what it's beautiful because what you want to move to is like, hey, after, after we processed it or got some feedback or some teaching, hey bro, did, did you talk to Jesus about that? And then now we're, oh, now we're getting closer. And maybe the last 10 minutes of spiritual direction, praise God, maybe the last 10 minutes we're getting to the fact of like, Hey, when you got angry or hurt, like what did, what was Jesus like there? Or what did he say there? And then it, that's great. Right. So I love, I mean, that happens. So it, it, we practice and stuff, but that's very appropriate if we have to like just clean the house a bit 
and get settled. And then I just think what we always want to move towards is what Jesus is actually saying to us, whether it's in our pain or our distraction. And I mean, another way to say that too, sometimes you come to spiritual direction and there's just obstacles in the way. You know, like, well, I haven't been able to pray because I'm strong with chastity. Or like, okay, let's sit there and let's process that. Let's receive your heart there. And then again, the direct the director then saying, okay, let's let's try to bring yeah. this to Jesus and be connected with him. And sometimes you got to there's obstacles in the way, and those take attention. You know, and it's not wasted time by any Absolutely. means. Absolutely. And we start with the ideal, and then we live in reality. But the the goal is to recognize here are the obstacles: desolation, discouragement, sadness, uh, lust, whatever. And then to try to move in in this space to come and be with Jesus there. Mm-hmm. And if a person hasn't had the ability to do that in prayer, then the goal is to do that with them. Yeah. Um, in real time, which is just can be a blessing. Then, like, okay, let's just be with, be show that to the Lord, or be with the Lord there, which can be powerful. Great. Anything left unsaid? Nope. I could talk about this a long, long, long time. I just love it. So I, I don't have anything more to say, but I'm just grateful to be able okay. to talk about it. Got it. Do you want to close us? Yeah. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Father in heaven, we adore you and thank you and praise you and just thank you for, um, just again reminding us that. What we long for is communion with you and your son and the Holy Spirit. We we just place our desire to be mothered and fathered in the spiritual life before you. We thank you for sending people that that desire this as well. Uh, we thank you for the clarity. We thank you for the new invitations, the challenges. But most importantly, just remind us that we are loved exactly where we're at and to just to be open the ways that you continue want to guide us and call us deeper. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Anything? Nope. Do you have anything, Father Angels? I don't think so. Uh, KFC.org forward slash sons or KFC of C for, or dot org forward slash Poco for the um, stuff we're going to get into next week. Yeah, looking forward to it. Two million. <laughs> Two, join the two million. The army. All right. See you uh, guys. God bless you guys. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know all.